begin by looking at Hebrews chapter 12, which says this, verse 1, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and the perfecter of our faith. We live in a time period in which there's celebrities, there are sports stars, there are divas, there are all kinds of so-called important people, but I actually think they're all a lot less than we make them out to be. Jesus is different than that. You can never have a big enough picture of Jesus. You can never have a big enough view. No matter what your view is, he is greater. He is b- bigger. He is more wonderful than anything we could ever imagine. And that makes him totally different from any other human being. In fact, in that sense, Jesus is totally unique, which is somewhat the meaning of the word holy. Holy means set apart, special, different, unique. We say that Jesus is holy. There is no one like him. That's what I want to talk about today. There is no one in the entire world that is like Jesus. And that's why we love, worship, and give a place to him in our lives like no other, no other person. There's no one like Jesus. I want to look at this from a number of different angles. The first one is kind of a, just a practical, kind of an interesting one. It's that Jesus is totally unique in historical verification. Totally unique as a historical figure. You can verify that Jesus lived on earth. And actually, when we read history books, you know, we often assume that ancient figures like Alexander the Great or Plato or Julius Caesar, all these people, they can be verified by history. But the truth is, there are no history books that go back more than a thousand years. They don't exist. It's hard to prove almost any historical person in history. We have fragments, we have copies, or we have books that are a thousand years old. If you go back 2,000 years, there's nothing literally written then about any other ancient figure. But Jesus is totally different, actually. Again, unique to history from that standpoint. First of all, there are 27 different New Testament sources that describe his life and ministry. And that's different from any other figure that's ever lived. But not not only beyond beyond the Bible, it goes further than that. His life is actually mentioned by numerous other non-biblical authors, such as a guy named Cornelius Tacitus, kind of a famous writer, the great Jewish historian Flavius Josephus, that's AD 37, a man named Suetonius, who was a Roman historian. There was an African jurist, his name was Tertullian, he's famous in history. And even the Jewish Talmuds, which are books written about 100 to 500 A.D., Jesus is mentioned by name in all of these sources. There is no other historical figure, none. You go back to Caesar Augustus, anybody. You can't find any reference to a historical figure uh, in anything at all that compares to the fact that God went out of his way to say, hey, Jesus is not a mythical figure. He was a, a part of history. And if you go, by the way, to the Encyclopedia Britannica, it actually uses 20,000 words to describe Jesus. That's more than Aristotle, Cicero, Alexander the Great, Julius Caesar, Buddha, Confucius, Mohammed, and Napoleon Bonaparte combined. 20,000 words, so again, about the reality of this person we call Jesus. He did walk the earth. It's a myth that he's just a figure or a guru from the past. There is more historical evidence for the fact that he was a real human being than any other person in history, and it's not even close. So there is no one like Jesus. Number two, Jesus is also unique in the prophecies related to his life and work. And I know we, we, we know that, we've heard about that, but we tend to maybe not think you know, deeply enough about the fact that his life was prophesied, his life was announced, and that's unique to all of history. In fact, I'm going to give you some interesting statistics from that vantage point. But, so his life purpose was announced by numerous prophecies hundreds of years before he came. Now, we, we say now the coming of Jesus took place in 6 to 5 B.C., 
That's now the way the calendars kind of line up. But in the Old Testament, the Old Testament contains about 300 different references to a Messiah, right? And to the Messiah coming. And actually, when you look at it from any honest angle, they only could have been fulfilled in one person. And that is, that is Jesus. And those prophecies include him being a Jew. That's Numbers 24, 17. And a Jew from the tribe of Judah. That's Genesis 49, 10. He was in the line of David. That's, Jer- that's Jeremiah 23, 5. He was born in David's hometown of Bethlehem. That's Micah 5, 2. He was preceded by a messenger, John the Baptist. That's Isaiah 43, 40, verse 3. He was betrayed by a close friend. That's Psalm 41, 9. He was sold for 30 pieces of silver. That's Zechariah 11, 12. He was crucified with thieves. Psalm 22, 16. And he was buried in a rich man's tomb. Isaiah 53, 9. So that's only about eight of them, right? Eight or, eight or ten of them. A man named Peter Stoner, he says in Science Speaks, that's a book, that the odds of Jesus fulfilling only eight of the major prophecies are one in 10 to the 17th power. That is a one followed by three, six, nine, yeah, yeah, a whole bunch of, uh, whole bunch of zeros. And so this man, uh, Stoner, says, he concludes, quote, the prophets had just one chance in 10 to the 17th power of having them all come true in any one man. But they all came true in Jesus. I want you to let that scientific probability kind of sink deeply into your heart. Not only is there more recorded evidence for the fact there was a person named Jesus Christ who came 2,000 years ago, but he's the only one that comes close you know, to, to lining up to these 300 scriptures. Even, even in my morning reading, I was reading out of the book of Isaiah in chapters 18 to 22, and there's a number of prophecies that are there. And there, where you go throughout the Old Testament, you see the prophecies, and they all, you know, they're, they're generic. They could point a lot of different directions, but when you take them all together and put them all together, they only line up in one direction, and that is the person of Jesus Christ, who came, of course, a long time ago. 